Hello and welcome to this video on describing probabilities and the probability number line. Now what probability is, is how likely something is to happen. So probability, how likely something is to happen. Now there's two ways to describe a probability. We could use kind of worded terms like certain, impossible, unlikely, likely, even. And those are the terms you might see in exam. Or we can describe a probability using a number, and we'll see that in a bit. But let's describe probabilities in terms of words first. Let's take this example here. We want to choose one of these terms to best describe the probability of throwing a head on a fair coin. So let's think about this. Well, if you think about it, if you have a fair coin, you're equally likely to get a head as you are to get a tails. And we have a special word for that. We say that the probability is evens. And that means there's the same chance of it happening, i.e. getting heads, as there is of it not happening, i.e. not getting a heads. What about 1b? The probability of winning the national lottery. Now, there is certainly a chance of winning the lottery, but that chance is really, really low. It used to be 1 in 14 million to win the UK national lottery. I think it's even less than that now. So it's not impossible, but it's unlikely. So we'd say this one is unlikely. What about C? Next month will have at least 28 days in it. Well, that's absolutely certain. Every month of the year has at least 28 days in it. So we say that is certain. What about D? Rolling at least a two on a fair dice. Well, on a fair dice, we have one, two, three, four, five, six. Now, all the numbers on a dice, except for one, would be at least two. So that's every outcome except for throwing a one. So that's quite likely, isn't it? we'd say that was likely. But not certain, because we might throw a one, and that's not at least two, is it? And then finally, with E, rolling a seven on a fair dice. Well, you only get up to six on a dice, don't you? So it's absolutely impossible that we're gonna roll a seven. So we write impossible. Now, for this second question, we're going to use um, a number to represent the probability. Now, probabilities always go between 0 and 1. Now, 0 means that it's impossible, that it's absolutely not going to happen. So if something has a probability of 0, it's not going to happen. And if something has a probability of 1, then it's absolutely certain to happen. So that's the maximum value you can have for probability, a value of 1. Where do you think evens would be? Well, evens would be exactly in the middle, and that would be a probability of 0.5, or half. So it's a half chance of it happening if it's as likely to happen as it is to not happen. And you might be able to guess where likely and unlikely would occur. So likely is going to be somewhere close to certain. Obviously, it's slightly subjective what likely means. It could be closer. Uh, and then unlikely is going to be around here, isn't it? Close to impossible. So let's think about these different outcomes uh, based on this spinner. And we want to put each of these things onto this number line. So we're spinning a spinner. We've got 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, and 6 on it. Now, where on this number line would it be to spin a 7? Well, there's not a 7 on this spinner. So it's going to be impossible. So it's going to have a probability of zero. So A is going to go here. It's completely impossible. What about spinning a prime number? Now remember that a prime number has two factors, only itself and one. Now one is not prime because it only has one factor. However, two is prime. Its only factors are two in itself. So two is prime. What else have we got? Three is prime. Its only factors are three in itself. Uh, 5 is prime, it's only factors of 5 in itself, but 6 is not prime because it has other factors like 2 and 3. So we've got 2, 3 and 5, and we've got 6 outcomes in total. Now in 3 of those 6 outcomes, we have a prime number, and that's half the time, so we say that would be evens. So spinning a prime number would be evens in the middle of our number line. What about spinning an even number? Well, let's count how many even numbers we have. One is odd, it's not even. One is odd. Two is even. Three is odd. Five is odd. And six is even. So two out of the six things on our spinner are even. 
Now we know if it was 3 out of 6, that's half the time, so that would be evens. So 2 out of 6 would be slightly lower down. In fact, it would be a probability of third. But we're just going to put it here on our number line. Spinning an even number would be slightly less than half because there's only 2 out of the 6. And finally, we've got a number greater than 1. Now, how many of these numbers are greater than 1? Well, the 2 is, the 3 is, the 5 is, and the 6 is. That's 4 out of the 6. That's more than half the time, so it's more than evens, and we're going to put it here. So D is going to go roughly here. So just to summarise, there's two different ways that we can describe probabilities. We can either use key terms such as these, or we can describe a probability as a number between 0 and 1, where 0 means absolutely impossible, 1 means absolutely certain, and 0 0.5 would be a half chance, which we call evens. And that means it's just as likely to happen as it is to not happen, like throwing a fair coin, for example.